Damn weird. 41. Ghosts. In folklore, a ghost sometimes known as an apparition, haunt, phantom, poltergeist, shade, specter, spirit, spook, and wrath, amongst a very few of them. In truth, there are many different, but they're related to a, you know, a cultural encounter. They are dealt with in later videos giving more definition by either location or culture. Uh, this is more of a loose definition of it all. This definition will end up applying a little bit to the others, kind of like the Chubacabra videos I did, where there are actually four because there's a few different definitions because they're obviously talking about different things and the details. Now where this can matter is if it is a psychological situation, then understanding the societies and cultures that they come from, then you'll better understand the situation. But also, if ghosts are people dying, the culture and the society they came from may affect their form. So the ghost is a soul or spirit of a dead person or animal that can appear to the living. Description of ghosts vary widely from an invisible presence to a translucent or barely visible wispy shapes to realistic, lifelike visions, whatever. The deliberate attempt to contact the spirit of a deceased person is known as necromancy, or in spiritualism, it's known as a seance. The belief in the existence of an afterlife, as well as manifestations of the spirit of the dead, is widespread. Dating back to animism or ancestor worship in pre-literate cultures, Certain religious practices, funeral rites, exorcisms, and some practices of spiritualism and ritual magic are specifically designed to rest the spirits of the dead. Ghosts are generally described as solitary, human-like essences, though stories of ghostly armies and the ghosts of animals, rather than humans, have also been recounted. They are believed to haunt particular locations, objects, or people they were associated with in life. The overwhelming consensus of science is that ghosts do not exist. Their existence is impossible to falsify and ghost hunting has been classified as pseudoscience despite centuries of investigations. There is no scientific evidence that any location is inhabited by spirits or the dead. But at one time, they also denied the existence of germs. It really wasn't called science much back then. Besides denoting the human spirit or soul, both of the living and the deceased, the Old English word is used as a synonym of Latin, spiritus, also in the meaning of breath or blast, from the earliest around the 9th century. It could also denote any good or evil spirit such as angels and demons. Anglo-Saxon gospel refers to demonic possessions of, of Matthew as an unclean ghost. Also from Old English period, the Spirit of God, as in the Holy Ghost. The now prevalent sense of the soul of the deceased person spoken of as appeared in a visible form only emerges in Middle English 14th century. The modern noun does, however, retain a wider field of application, extending on one hand to soul or spirit and vital principle, mind or psyche, the seat of feeling, thought or moral judgment. On the other hand, used figuratively of any shadowy outline or fuzzy or unsubstantial image in optics, photographs, and cinematography especially have a flare, secondary images, or spurious signals. In preliterate folk religions, these beliefs are often summarized under animism or ancestor worship. Some people believe the ghost or spirit never leaves Earth until there is no one left to remember the one who died. All the human soul was sometimes symbolically or literally depicted in ancient cultures as a bird or other animal. It appears to have been widely held that the soul was an extant reproduction of the body in every feature, even down to the clothing the person wore. This is depicted in artwork from various ancient cultures, including such works as the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which shows deceased people in the afterlife appearing much as they did before death, including the style of dress. A common attribute of ghosts, many types, is a widespread belief concerning ghosts 
in that they are composed of misty, airy, or subtle material. Anthropologists link this idea to an early belief that ghosts were the person within the person, the person's spirit. Most notably in ancient cultures as a person's breath, which upon exhaling in colder climates appears visible as a white mist. This belief may have also fostered the metaphorical meaning of breath in certain languages, such as Latin and Greek pneuma, which by analogy became extended to mean the soul in the Bible. God is depicted as synthesizing Adam as a living soul from the dust of the earth and the breath of God. The physician John Ferrer wrote an essay towards a theory of apparitions in 1813, in which he argued the sightings of ghosts were the result of optical illusions. Later, the French physician Alexandre Jacques Francois Pierre de Beausmont, long name, published On Hallucination or the Rational History of Apparitions, Dream, Ecstasy, Magnetism, and Somnambulism in 1845, in which he claimed sightings of ghosts were the result of hallucinations. According to the Gallup Poll News Services, belief in haunted houses, ghosts, and communication with the dead and witches had an especially steep increase in the 1990s. A 2005 Gallup poll found that about 32% of Americans believed in ghosts. As with many of these unusual encounters with the unknown, they cannot be coming from nowhere. There is something to at least some of these. Versions of ghosts appear throughout our history and across the planet in many cultures and societies. This is just, of course, the basics of the ghost concept. You'll find this, though, is applied through many cultures into being their own definition, such as, I'm going to do the next one, would be shade. That was based upon the Greco-Roman. You'll hear some of this, but there's some specifics to that society's. And then you may wonder what in their culture of death and life is reflected in the beliefs of these spirits, as we can call them, or ghosts. Thank you.